Awesome lake trout jigging episode that's really going to be based around tips and tricks and i know in my last video i told you guys i'd be covering a lot more in this one um and i got some really good feedback from you guys on what you wanted to hear so we're going to make sure we cover all that information and lots more with some big fish catches stay tuned this is going to be an awesome video all right so to get started with this video i'm going to take a minute kind of breaking down lake trout seasonal movements so as we know, many of us that jig a lot, we know that trout are not found in the same places all year round. You know, they're in the spring, they can really be anywhere um, simply because the water temperature is the same everywhere. Um, even dipping down into the mid thirties, lake trout can be living up by the surface, but lake trout's optimal living temperature is around 45 to 57, 58 degrees at the, at, at the highest side. Um, so in the springtime, we're going to see lakers actually look for warmer water, especially on the big lakes up north, Lake Michigan, Lake Superior. They're going to be moving into shallower bays and pockets that are windblown and get a lot of um, that warmer surface water. And when I, when I say warmer, I mean like it could be a two degree difference they're going to move up into those bays. So as spring moves along, those fish are going to start transitioning towards their summer spots. And you won't really see many fish schooled up, but once you find the correct depth range where they're the most comfortable, you're going to have the most success. Moving into the summer stage, you're going to see the thermocline start to develop, which is a big part in finding fish in the summer. Um, once the thermocline develops, you'll be able to see it on your fish finders as kind of a thin bubbly layer um, that varies from lake to lake, but usually it's about three quarters of the way to the bottom, four fifths of the way to the bottom even. Um, and it will cover the bottom 30 feet, the bottom 40 feet of the water column. And basically what that is, is it's going to be a colder temperature area. Um, where other game fish are not going to live as much, but lake trout and other trout species are going to thrive in because it stays colder. Um, and it has a lot less oxygen than other areas, which is why other game fish can't really live there, but lake trout, lake trout are fine. So once that thermocline develops, you're going to want to look for bait. Um, and one area that I kind of like to check is those deep deep points, the ends of deep points, and deep sharp breaks. Um, and in the summer, we don't really fish much deeper than 120 feet of water. So pretty much anything shallower than that, 90 to 120 is the primary depth range. Um, and once again, we're only vertical jigging in the summer, pretty much spring will cast for them as it's a little bit easier to cover water and find fish that are very spread out. So that kind of gives you guys a breakdown and I'm not, I have a few years of experience, but I'm not super familiar with fall. So I don't want to go into too much detail on fall fishing simply because I haven't really been able to fish for them in the fall because of school and stuff. But that's kind of my general understanding on their movements throughout the year. What I've noticed in the past few years of fishing for them. Um, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And if you have any questions on how they move, the depths they move in, when they school up, Feel free to ask me those questions in the comments and I'll get right back with you. Take a look at this. It gets even better. She's got one eye. Alright guys, that was that was a solid fish. I think we weighed it right at 12 pounds. Um, we had a couple that were probably around 10 pounds earlier, but that was my first ever hair jig fish and I know that a lot of my buddies have started throwing hair jigs for smallmouth this year simply because of how versatile they are and how natural of a presentation they can be. So I figured why not for Lakers, you know, same difference. It's like a minnow or bait fish down swimming along the bottom and it's just fishing it slow. Um, just very slowly rolling it. So we're going to try to replicate, replicate what we just did. Dad, what are you throwing? 
I've got the three quarter ounce blade bait on. Just uh, nailed two in a row on it. Yeah, so we're keep grinding it out. I think we got probably 15 fish hooked. Um, I think we've landed 12 or 13, so solid start to our day. Got some rain coming in possibly, but we're gonna keep an eye on that and keep, keep grinding it out. So see you guys around. So, what you guys just saw there, we marked we marked a few fish back here, and then we stopped, and these three popped up right, right below us. So what you just saw, you can't really see my dad's jig dropping down, but it's right there. He reeled up, and this fish followed it 20 feet off the bottom. You can see that fish is still hanging out there. It's kind of hard to see because of the glare, but... There are definitely a few around here. Oh, eat it, eat it. <laughs> Hair jig. He smoked it. Alright, it's a really big one again. <laughs> he stopped fighting at all though. No, he came off and it Things like this long. I'm gonna have to try that here to really get Well, I doubt you guys saw that one, but this might be the deal. I don't know. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering what are they using, how are they doing it, all that kind of stuff. So I want to do a little tips and tricks portion here for those of you that are thinking about that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to start with kind of the baits we use and then I'll go over how they're fished But they're they're all fairly similar, you know, we're trying to resemble alewives Gobies, you know, whatever's living down on the bottom or in the bottom 20 feet of the water column that these Lakers are feeding on So the main lures that we use are going to be a jigging spoon a tube um, a hair jig and a blade bait so they're all fished very similarly, um, pretty close to the bottom. You know, a lot of times the fish will chase, but these, these lures um, are all very effective for lake trout. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick look at each of them. So your jigging spoon um, can be any, anywhere between one and two, two and a half ounces even for the biggest ones but we kind of tend to stick with the two ounce range um, simply because it's the most efficient and sinks fast and we, we've we've just had good success on it so next off we have the tube jig and we haven't particularly spent a ton of time fishing it in grand traverse but um we're experimenting and trying to trying to find some new stuff that works so that is that guy and then the fish I just caught was on a hair jig just like this and um, it's fished very similarly to a tube where you can either pop it or you can roll it right along the bottom um, to kind of trigger their bites. And finally is the blade bait. And the blade bait is a very productive bait out here um, simply due to the high amounts of vibration and attracting power it has. And you can fish it a little bit faster due to that as well. Unlike a couple of these other baits with tubes and um, the hair jigs, you can't fish them quite as fast simply because they don't have as much drawing power as a spoon or a um, blade bait would. So that's kind of a little breakdown on the lures that we use. So when we get to our next spot, I'm going to kind of explain how they're each fished. Alright guys, I'm going to do a quick little how-to tutorial. 
Um, just gonna kind of demonstrate with the hair jig because you can fish everything else just like the hair jig. So we have a little pot of school or a pot of fish behind us here, about 50, 60 feet. So when I'm when I'm making casts with this, it's a two ounce lure. It's pretty heavy. I want to have enough line out that I can kind of swing it um, and get some good momentum going that way. So I'm gonna cast past those fish back there. Let it fall all the way to the bottom. I just leave my bail open until it stops. Let me go to the back of the boat so you guys can see. So my line's still falling there, it stops. So I'm on the bottom right now. So what I like to start out doing is do a couple reels and a pop. Just to kind of see, get attention, you know. Um, see if there's any active fish really close to where it fell. And when I'm retrieving it, I like to do these little sweeping motions. If I'm using a spoon, I do bigger sweeping motions and fish a little faster with the hair jig. I try to keep it really slow, really natural. Every once in a while, I'll let it fall all the way back down to the bottom again because I want to make sure that I'm in the strike zone. He's off. Came out. picture. Nice. Beautiful. I guess we got just people that want to do this. Not quite as big, but... <laughs> that was quite the fight. <laughs> Another solid, solid fish. Give me a face first. All right. Back he goes. Jigs there. Um, forget the name of it. It's like a raised jig or something like that. I forget the name. Yeah, cool, cool fins on them, like a brush shot. 